Right, okay then, so hopefully this is all working. Um, okay, right. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a quick tutorial explaining the workflow um, of how to get a 3D asset, a custom 3D asset that you've made from scratch into the creation kit, or at least ready to take into the creation kit. Um, this is mainly because we are growing our 3D department now quite quickly. We're getting a lot of new artists in, which is great, and some of them just may not be familiar with the workflow of how to get their assets into the creation kit, or at least ready to use in the creation kit. So I'm just going to explain the steps that are necessary for that to happen. It's pretty simple really, it's not that complicated. So. Um, just before we start, the software that you're going to need is you're going to need NIFScope and you're going to need NIF Utilities. Now you can just Google search them um, and you can find download links for them or you can ask someone on the team in the chat channel or anything and they'll have a link to it somewhere. Uh, and you'll also need a, a, the NIF exporter for 3ds Max. Um, if you ask, oh, actually, Arasan's stuck it on our 3D channel. It's on the drop down for the pins. So if you look on there, it has Max's version 2018, 2017, 2016. So just download that NIF exporter from there and then drag that into your plugins folder and you should be good to go. So I'm using Maya because I'm uh, going to export it from Maya into 3ds Max but if you're using Max you can skip this step entirely so um, the reason why is because I'm using extension 2 and the NIF exporter for Maya only works with extension 1 so I'm just using Max to, to export my assets through Max's NIF exporter so yeah um, this mesh I'm using is an example mesh it's one I've already completed a while ago uh, it's for the Alien Ruins, one of the interior hallway meshes it's a huge thing it's split into multiple sections as you can see here the reason why I've done this is not just because it's such a large mesh but it's because of the way that you tile I mean the way that you texture assets for architecture by using tileable textures most of the time it's in a nice effective method to group together uh, sections of the mesh that use the same texture so everything that you see here is using the same texture and then if I select this this is using a different texture and then this is all using a different texture and so on so once you've got that set up and textured I also have my collision as well which you can see there that little black outline it's like a simplified version of this mesh that will be binding to the mesh through something called chunk merge later on um, so I want to have all this selected and then I'm going to just send that over to 3ds max so I want to book like that send this new scene right so okay then now we're um, I'm in 3ds max um, if you're already using Max, like I mentioned earlier, you should already be at this stage. That whole Maya step isn't really um, relevant to you. So now we're at this stage. Um, I have all my mesh sections down here. Um, so I also have my collision mesh also here, as you can see. Uh, I'm gonna hide that for now. So if you've got one as well, which you should have for your mesh, then hide that and then we're going to export the actual main mesh itself first so just select everything there and click on drop down and then export uh, <coughs> now I'm just going to sort this out a second I've just got a few old meshes here that I'm just going to overwrite that I'm not using anymore um, so right I'm going to call this mesh then hallway because it's just an example mesh that I'm using for now and if you're going to make 
a new mesh from scratch you can call it whatever you want obviously but if you are remaking a old oblivion mesh then you want to be calling it the same name as the old mesh in the first place and I usually export mine into a separate folder whilst I'm working on my asset so for example I'm using my export folder in my max folder and then once I've exported it here and it's all finished and done I'll then drag that into my Skyrim folder later on so I can use it in game so I'm just going to export that now as the net immerse game biro now if you've downloaded the NIF exporter I mentioned earlier on the one that's pinned on the 3D channel then you should have this here you you just you just have to drag it into your max plugin folder and it should show up here so when that's selected you've called it whatever you want just click on save and then you'll have this little export box coming up here now yours wants to look exactly the same as mine uh, with this ticked vertex colors that's so it exports your vertex color information on the mesh which will be things such as ambient occlusion if you've baked it in or you can add things like bits of dirt or mold or you know onto your mesh and whatnot using this so make sure that your settings look exactly like this and then we just click on export and then we're now going to just export the collision mesh as well so let's bring back that and then we'll select it on the little drop down menu so it's selected uh, and then same thing so export and then we'll call this one hallway underscore collision uh, save <coughs> now for this one it's, it's exact same settings once again but just untick vertex colors because you don't need that with a collision mesh so then export now that's the max step all done and out of the way so now next we're, go we're gonna go into NIFScope and set a few things up in there before we can use the, the asset in game Alright, okay, so now we're in Lifscope. Uh, I'm using version 2.0.0 pre alpha 5. Um, it's quite an older version, I've been using this for most of the year now. There are newer versions out, so it's up to you if you want to use the newer versions <coughs> or not. So, uh, right, I'm just going to open that mesh that I've saved out of Max. So, file open, and it will be the hallway out.nif you see you've got two versions of each meshes you've got um, the hallway.nif and then the hallway.out.nif and then you've got again hallway collision out.nif so you want to be using the out file so let's just open that <coughs> and this should show up fully textured now the reason why it's just showing up for me fully textured is because whilst I was making my assets in my 3D program <coughs> I assigned my textures to it whilst they was already in my Skyrim data directory so um, what that obviously means for you if you're using a unique texture that you might have exported out of substance if you haven't dragged that yet into your Skyrim directory <coughs> then it won't show up here yet so what you need to do is just apply the textures and to do that you just need to click on the little arrow on here and it'll show all these end try shapes now I've got quite a lot of them because I've got a lot of sections to my mesh it's split into multiple groups and stuff so what you need to do is click on the try shape and then click on the arrow next to that then click on the arrow again next to where it says shader property and then you should have this texture set underneath so if, if you click on that it should show its little list down here which is where you apply your textures um, so obviously what you'd need to do first is you'd need to drag your textures that you've exported out of substance into the correct folder which will depend on obviously which asset that you've made um, but it should be in program files, steam, steam apps, common, skyrim and then data and you'll have textures and you'll have 
um, meshes, sorry. And when you've finished your meshes, you'll obviously drag them into this folder and then textures will go into this folder. Now in each of these folders you'll have test for and that's our um, Sky Oblivion folder which contains all of our assets and textures. So <coughs> um, you want to drag your textures into here. So if you've made for example a new rock texture or something you'll drag it in the rocks folder and and then you'll just assign it to the mesh from here. Um, for me obviously I've used the Aeliad Ruins so mine will be in Dungeons and Aeliad Ruins because mine are already in here you see when I applied these textures within my 3D program when I exported the mesh it, it saved this in to the NIF file as you can see down here look textures, test for rock, ch rock and so on so if you haven't got your textures add them this way so you just click on the little flower icon thing and then it opens it up and then the first line here will be your diffuse texture and then the line below that here will be your normal map and the specular map is obviously included within the normal map using DDS files so if you need any help with how to set up DDS files and stuff in Photoshop and just ask somebody in the texture channel I'm sure they'll help you out with that. You just need to have the um, DDS tools plugin for Photoshop in order to export them. There's two out there which are more or less the same. Um, there's Intel's and then there's NVIDIA's so you can choose any one you want and once you've dragged that into your Photoshop plugins folder you can export DDS files then. So. Right so now once you've got those applied and it's showing up here again if you've got multiple sections to your mesh like I have you'll need to apply those for each of those sections that you've got each of those tri shapes yes so like, like so as you see in mine I've got you know AR stone there for that section and then this section here has got its own texture as well which is AR stone 01 so once you've gone through all those tri shapes and applied everything on here or like I said if you've already applied it in your 3D program whilst it was in that Skyrim folder then it should already show up here anyway like mine did when I opened it so next right the BSX flag so I just want to mention this this uh, is why you have that collision box ticked on export from Max um, what this does is it basically will tell the mesh to add the havoc collision to it so it just enables it on the mesh so you want to change this down here to 130 that seems to be standard for pretty much every um, static architecture mesh um, and then you want to just click the little flag next to it <coughs> and just ensure that that one's ticked enable collision and then accept and that's sorted then so next you just want to click on the NI node and right click on it and then click on block and then go to convert and then Bethesda and then BS fade node and that will just convert that NI node into a fade node which is the um, node that most Skyrim assets use now so once that's all done the next step is to just apply vertex color information to the mesh because you've exported it but it's not showing it on the mesh because you need to add what's known as a shader flag to your tri shape so I click on the first tri shape and then I'll click on where it says BS lighting shader property and down here you'll have a little box that will say shader flags too so you want to double click on that and click on the little arrow and then choose vertex colors just here once that's ticked you also want to choose uh, is it? Environment, la uh, environment map light fade so once those two things are ticked that means the vertex information now will show 
on that part of the mesh so obviously if you've got more tri shapes like I have you'd need to apply those to each tri shape so if I click on the next tri shape and click on that again as you can see it's not here so I need to apply that again to this one and I'll need to do that for each one of these tri shapes once that's all done the last thing really you want to be doing in here at the moment is <coughs> clicking on spells and go on update all tangent spaces up here and that will just fix any normal issues that's on the mesh from export so now that's completely done you should have the mesh that's fully textured and those textures you've assigned should have the correct file directories which should be textures forward slash test4 forward slash whichever folders you've added it into and once that's all done uh, you just need to save it to file save and that will just overwrite the mesh and the next step then is to open up NIF utilities um, now this again it's just like a little program that you can just download so yeah once you've got this open um, the NIF convert is not really needed anymore so you can just ignore this section you want to go straight on to chunk merge now this is where we're going to apply our collision mesh so target file is the main mesh file which is this one here so you want to click on a little folder and you want to open up the main file which will be the hallway dash out uh, near for me so whatever you've called yours it will be blah blah dash out so open that one and then this obviously is your collision file so open that which is is hallway underscore collision dash out and the template will be just a regular Skyrim mesh um, I just use a standard one here which farm banner post zero one because it, it works fairly well for most assets once you've got that added in there and selected just make sure you've got this option highlighted here and then the collision material that is basically the sound that it will make in the collision I'm going to obviously choose stone so if you smack this with a sword or something it will make a stone a stone sound sorry so once you've got all these settings done like that uh, just click on add collision and it'll say collision data added successfully and then that's done then so you can close that out and in this file again you can just click on file reload and that should reload that same mesh that you were just working on but now it should have an extra block here called BHK collision objects and that's your collision <coughs> information so you can view it on the mesh by just clicking this little thing up here show collision and there it is assigned so now that's pretty much done so you've got your textured mesh that's obviously got the correct file directory set to it um, then you've got your vertex colors assigned to all your tri shapes um, you've got your collision data added and that should say fade node so that's everything now so all you got to do there is just file save and that mesh is ready to use then in Skyrim so you can just drag that mesh from wherever you've saved it into your Skyrim data meshes folder and <coughs> that will be usable in game then yep so hopefully that's um, helped you figure out the workflow to how to get an asset ready for uh, use in Skyrim um, if there's any steps that I didn't quite explain as well uh, you can always just message me and I'll help you the best I can okay